In the last YouTube video I posted, I really explored why this shop, this shop, this shop, this shop, and this shop all managed to do over $45,000 in sales in less than one year. So they started after 2023 and managed to do over 45,000 sales. In that video, if you haven't watched that video, make sure you go check it out. But what we were doing in that video was really talking about the core attributes of what helped them achieve that much sales volume in such a short period of time. But in this video, I want to highlight another key thing that each one of those shops are doing. Well, another three key things that the, all of those shops were doing. So again, in this video, we're going to be talking about the three things that you need to make sure that you're incorporating in your Etsy business model to make sure that you are not getting drowned out in 2024 and beyond. And it's really setting the pace for what the future of Etsy really is going to look like. If we thought about who was selling on Etsy back in the early days of Etsy, you would say my grandma's selling on Etsy, my auntie's selling on Etsy. You know, they could make good sales as a side and then put their shop on vacation mode for a month and then come back and their sales would be pretty consistent. As we know now, that is just not a thing. Why is that not a thing? Because people have found out the secret of Etsy. So that means that you have all of these sharks coming in, people with heavy Amazon backgrounds or Shopify backgrounds that see the opportunity with Etsy and realize that Wow, on Etsy, not only are my profit margins three times what Amazon is, but also Etsy actually brings in a good amount of traffic and that traffic is also cheaper than maybe my other efforts on my own website or on Amazon. When that happens, you have people that are coming in from really competitive backgrounds and trying to take over market shares. The goal then becomes for Etsy merchants is that you're building a business that is built to grow on a high level because those are the people that you are competing against. So it's not that if you're an older seller and your sales are dropping that you're completely doomed. It's just that the standard of competitiveness has changed, which means now we have to change. We have to meet that standard of all these new sharks coming into the game. This is not just true for Etsy. This is if you're an Airbnb model, it's in if you're in land acquisition and you're flipping land, it's, it's in, I don't know, freaking since that girl Cody Sanchez went viral talking about laundry mats, the valuation of laundry mats have like quadrupled owning actual like laundry, like clothe cleaning companies, right? So this is true for any type of business model. It's not something new. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're assuming that risk the day that you say I'm an entrepreneur. Again, we can either evolve and grow and change with the times or we can get drowned out and cry about it. With that being said on Etsy, we're definitely not putting our shops in vacation mode ever. And we're going to make sure that our shops are trackable, repeatable, and scalable. So what we're seeing, especially in that example that I showed you earlier, those shops aren't really doing anything significantly crazy or untangible. They're really just doing what's simple and what is working and they're doing it well on a repeatable basis. So the first thing and the most important thing is making sure that you are building a business that is trackable. So that means that if you are just making products on a whim, everything is just made to order and you have no idea what your product costs are, or you're just guessing your product costs. You're not building a business that's trackable where at the end of the month, you have concrete numbers about where the, your money is being spent. And in the beginning, sometimes it's hard, especially if you're doing made to order goods, we want to not waste materials, but that's okay. Cause even in my business now we do a lot of sewing and we buy hundreds of yards of fabric. And so sometimes in that case scenario, we don't actually want to pre make a bunch of inventory that doesn't sell. So we don't do that. We will make a small order quantity of each design and then publish it on Etsy and see what takes off. And then the ones that take off, we end up, you know, start pre-making for that specific style. And then we actually track the inventory properly. And if you're doing print on demand or if you're doing digital downloads, you don't really have this problem. But if you're making your actual goods or you're buying goods and putting personalization on top of it, you want to make sure that you're having some sort of system where you're tracking your inventory and you're tracking your costs. And just a little hint, I'm actually building a tool right now that is going to basically solve all that problem for you. So you won't have to do any manual reports, any V lookups, no more Excel sheets, no more pens, no more papers. My tool will automate this for you, but it's still a little bit of a secret. So 
stay tuned. <laughs> so trackable is the first one. At the end of the month, we need to be producing profit and loss statements or your accountant needs to be producing you a meaningful profit and loss statement that is telling you something about your business. And you need to go to your accountant and say, I would like to do my profit and loss statement on an accrual basis, not on a cash basis. A cash basis will give you true valuation of how much money you have. It's not actually telling you what's happening in your business. You know, if your business is this pie chart here, if you're doing cash-based accounting, you cannot see each piece of the pie of what's happening with your business. You can only do that if you're doing your books on an accrual basis. And I have more videos about that in my channel and I'll keep putting out more videos here coming up about what that really looks like more in depth. But the moral of the story here is you need to have a trackable business. Every cost associated with every sale that happens in your business needs to be trackable. Number two is repeatable. So if you are making products or designing print on demand items or digital downloads, you need to be able to build a system around every part of your business engine, not just actually product creation, your customer service, shipping, your design process, photography process, every single process and every single task that you do in your business that you just do on a whim actually needs to be a repeatable process. So if you have a really lengthy process of developing your goods, we are sewing goods ourselves, and we have three different seamstresses that we work with and we have every single product that we make completely templated out and <laughs> repeated. It's a repeatable process when our seamstresses come in and basically help us sew. Those processes had to be created obviously by us. But the point is if you have a really complex product where only you can be the one that can make it, that's not a repeatable business model. That also means that at any given time, if you get a hundred or 150 orders, if you have a really lengthy process of doing your product development, it's not going to be the third thing, which is scalable. At any given moment, if you get a huge influx of orders, you should be equipped to fulfill any amount of orders. Or if it's just a matter of like, you don't have the raw materials, if you did have the raw materials, you would be able to turn around those orders an embarrassing amount of time. So repeatable and scalable, which are the last two go really hand in hand, is every single process from customer service, research and development, design, listing optimization, ads management, inventory management, all of the things are all of those processes created and repeatable? And then also, are they scalable? And those are the three really core concepts that your business needs to adopt if you wanna be competitive moving forward. Guys, I hope you got a lot of value out of this really quick business theory episode. There's a lot more in-depth trainings in my YouTube channel. So make sure if you're struggling with ads, if you're struggling with building out systems, hiring and firing employees, all of the things, all of those videos, there's thousands of hours of free information in my YouTube channel. So make sure you check out all of those trainings. Thank you guys so much for staying to the end and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye guys.